This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, a few years ago I did a couple of Bifrost uh, tutorials on splashing water, water from a faucet and so forth. And I decided to do an updated version for my 2017 and this time we are going to create waves crashing on a beach. Okay, so let's check it out. Now before we jump into the video, just want to point you guys towards a link below towards my other channel, MH Tutorials 2 full of photography, film, and special effects tutorials, okay? If you are a serious 3D artist, you need to have those skills, okay? So check it out. Here we go. Okay, guys, well, uh, waves crashing on a beach. Okay, we're going to start off by shutting this down. We're going to start with a polygon cube. We're going to hit R, we're going to start to scale that out, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to create the shape of a swimming pool, pretty much. Okay, so let's see, let's, uh, yeah, that's about right. Take it like that, we're going to right click on the vertex, so we're going to drag select these bottom vertices, hit W and push them out like so. And then we're going to right click at a face, select that face, hit Control E to extrude and W to pull out. Okay, so that last bit will basically be our beach. Okay, we're going to right click at a face, so we're going to select these two, we're going to hit Control E to extrude again, hit R to scale in somewhat, not too much, like so. And then we're going to hit a G to repeat and W to push down. And we want to make sure that our beach is okay. And then we're going to right click and get a vertex. We're going to take that vertex right there. And we're going to shift select that one right there. And we're going to push them down. I'm going to jump fuse, hit four, bring that down to pretty much this. Okay. Right, so that's our pool shape. Next, we need something to simulate our water, okay? We're gonna take another polygon cube. We're gonna hit R to scale that out. And we're gonna make it fit in our pool, okay? Or our beach. So we're gonna hit four for wireframe mode. We're gonna start to scale that, and then we'll scale it in this direction as well. Okay, that looks pretty close. Then we're going to jump in here. We're going to bring that down like so. We don't need to be as high as the top. And we certainly are not allowed to be higher than our beach. So this looks all good. And then we're going to right click at a vertex, hit W and push that up. After zoom in, we want to make sure that we're inside the dimensions of our pool or beach or sea or whatever. Okay. All right, so one more thing, we need a wave maker. So for that, we'll take another polygon cube. We'll hit four for wireframe mode so you can see it. We're gonna hit R, we're gonna kind of stretch that out and push that up and push it in a little bit. That's basically big enough. We're gonna hit W, we're gonna push that back. And in this view, we're gonna have a look and see where it's positioned. Okay, this looks about right. Okay, so we're all set to go. Now, a couple of things we need to do. First, I'm gonna hit five for shaded mode. I want this to be the main body for my water. Okay, so in object mode, I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna go to the FX menu. I'm gonna go to Bifrost and create a liquid. Now, as I do that, this box is created and you can see the blue particle showing up. Now, what I'm gonna do is hit Control A to pull up my attribute editor. I'm going to go into liquid shape one and I'm going to set the point size to two. That will make the uh, blue particles a little bit better visible for you guys. Okay. So now that I have that, I need to tell Maya that this water needs to interact with our pool. Okay. So with this selected, I'm going to shift select our pool here and I'm going to go to Bifrost and we're going to go to Collider. So now the water will interact, okay? Now, I don't necessarily want to see the object that is creating my water. So I am going to right click, assign a new material. 
I'll take a blin and I'll go in and set transparency way up so we don't see it. Now, another thing you can do is just hit Control H to hide it, but this works as well, all right? So, we're all set. Now, the only thing we need to do is animate our wave maker. So, we're gonna select this guy, like so. Make sure that that's the only thing we have selected. And I'm gonna make sure that we're on frame one of our animation. I'm gonna set this to 150 frames. That should be enough. And as we're on frame one, I'm gonna hit S to keyframe this, okay? Let's uh, select that guy again. And only that guy, yep. Okay, S to keyframe it. So we don't want this to go too fast uh, because it will splash water all over the place and we don't want it to be too big either, okay? So it's keyframed on frame one and uh, let's see, we got 150 frames. Let's scrub to, let's say, I don't know, frame 75 or so. We're gonna switch views and we're gonna go in here. We're gonna bring this guy to about here. That's far enough, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit S on the keyboard to keyframe that again, okay? We're gonna jump back to frame one. And uh, what we need to do now is we need to make the water collide with our object. So we got this guy selected. Now I need to select this guy here, but only that. Yeah, looks good. And we're gonna go to Bifrost and Collider. So we can apply a blend material to that one as well if you like, so we can't see it. But this should work, okay? Now keep in mind, the first time you hit play on this, it will take a while to scrub all the way through, but uh, we'll just uh, let it play out and you can see what happens, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna hit play. And it, the object, our wave maker, is starting to move. And as it does, it's creating a suction behind it, which will be the basis for our initial wave. And as we are going to stop our object well before we hit the beach, the wave will have time to form and to reach the beach and splash on it, okay? So basically how that uh, is done in the real world uh, under the effect of wind and obstacles underwater and differences in the height of seabed and so forth, okay? Now you can see that this effect is fairly strong, but that's okay. Uh, we're interested in what's gonna happen on the beach. So our object stopped moving you can see up here this uh, wave movement that's going on here, and that should translate all the way onto the beach. Okay, so we'll give that another second. And already you can see water particles starting to move onto the beach here. Uh, this thing is stationary already for a while now, and as our, uh, our frames move towards the end, you can see that the water is starting to reach our beach, okay? So hopefully we have enough frames for it to play out. I think it's pretty tight. So what we'll do there is we'll just uh, stop that. We'll go to, let's say 300. We'll have to cash out again, but that's fine. Just gonna jump back. So as we do this, you see that the wave is still coming and uh, basically it's a good simulation of a natural situation, okay? I'm just gonna stop the, um, the uh, simulation here because there's really no need to play that out to the end. But this is uh, how it works. So uh, it's up to you to come up with a nice and proper looking scene with the sand and textures and all that kind of stuff. But this is the, 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 the technique that you can use, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know as always. And thank you for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.
Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.